When we first designed our house, we wanted it to have a curvy shape, and by far the easiest way to do that is with grass. There are a couple of things to consider though with this sort of roof. The first thing is ventilation, and the second thing is weight. You're supposed to factor in a few feet of snow when you're doing the weight calculations because snow doesn't slide off a grass roof. But where we live, that's just not going to be a problem. But even a few inches of sodden soil does weigh more than most conventional roof coverings. So all the rafters need to be beefed up. Ours are nine by twos at one foot spacings. The middle section is made up of A-frames or trusses, while the two lower roofs are just really simple straight lengths of timber. The curves themselves don't come from the rafters or from the A-frames. They are made from having the tops of the walls curvy. All the A-frames are identical, and all the rafters are identical. This makes the roof really quick and simple and cheap to make. They just needed to be lifted into place by our amazing team of friends and family. We didn't have any machinery, we did it all with people power. On top of the rafters we put a breathable membrane. Above that goes big fat spacer battens. These maintain an air gap which is vital for the way the building breathes. Above that goes plywood sheeting. And on top of that goes the waterproof membrane. This waterproof membrane is what makes this sort of roof so different from most other types, because most roofs breathe. Moist air rising through the house can work its way out between tiles or slates or shingles or thatch, but this can't happen in our roof because it is actually waterproof. So ventilation is the most important thing to consider with this type of roof. Otherwise, your house will feel unhealthy and mouldy and will literally rot away. People living in a house will deliver litres and litres of water into the air every day from breathing and cooking and showering and washing up and watering the plants. And all this moisture has to be free to exit the house as quickly as possible. So ventilation was designed into this house from the beginning. I know you can do all this with heat exchange fans these days, but we did ours the passive way. Moisture passes through the ceilings, through the insulation, and into the gap made by the spacers. From there, it is drawn up through the walls and into the roof space, which is hollow and open. The moisture is then drawn up further and out of the building via the chimney, which is deliberately at the highest point. The chimney is a hollow box with ventilation holes. It also contains the stove flue pipes, of course. Well, this was our own experimental design, but 10 years on, we can say it has worked and our house is perfectly dry and warm. The waterproof membrane we used was the dimpled nylon roll used in basements. Perhaps we should have used rubber pond liner but we were worried it might droop the steepest parts of the roof. After that we used onion bags to hold the soil in place. Each was filled by hand with a special funnel, thanks Sam, and lifted up the scaffolding and onto the roof by hand. Luckily we had a great team of people to help because there were a whole lot of bags. And then we put on some grass seed, all the other seeds that have arrived since and were carried by the wind or by birds. Now, if we lived anywhere else, we would probably need to keep the grass short because long, dry grass would be a fire hazard. Luckily, kind of, we get a lot of rain, so it's only rarely a consideration. And because there's nothing up here to graze the grass, a unique little environment has developed and it's endlessly interesting. Anyway, we still really like our roof and we hope you found this video interesting and useful for your own houses. Watch out for more videos 
on the house build coming up. Thanks for watching. Sun's setting now, better go home. In the right way. You have too much beer there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>